Okay, guys. Um, so please switch on camera for a second just to be sure that you are here. And I'm not talking with myself, but also with you. Great, great. Alexander here, Yvonne here, Tudor. Tudor. Tudor is I hope he will come back. Okay, guys, uh, can you see my screen? Cool. So, did you receive uh, my email with, uh, with the file with this model sample? Yes. So, yes. If, you know, if somebody didn't receive it, please let me know. Okay, what will happen now? Um, if maybe you, you already uh, participated in my webinar uh, that organized for business model canvas, then you already know something about that. But what I would like you to, to do is to do your own business canvas. So that's that's why we will go quickly how to fulfill it. And um, yeah, so to understand why do we need it. So um, I, I will skip the, the story, the history, if you don't mind. So it was created by Alexander Osterwalder and updated by uh, Ash. My, uh, I don't know how to pr pronounce it correctly, sorry. So, nonetheless, uh, what we need from them is a uh, business model canvas that allow us to structure our idea, to structure our project, to analyze our strengths and weaknesses, and to put questions to ourselves, which we didn't maybe uh, ask before that. Uh, also, it helps us to find the opportunity and to pivot the project in case uh, we we are blocked by some things. Um, what uh, I would like to say also is, okay, nowadays it's it's um, you know it's it's tricky. I would even say to create uh, to create a business plan because mostly banks maybe ask business plans, but in the meantime, uh, what can uh, so what's important is not the business plan as a document but the planning as a process. Because while planning, uh, you ask again yourself uh, important questions. And um, being uh, in, uh, as a jury member in different competitions, being uh, as a representative of different investors, what's it, what is a good sign for me is uh, not, uh, it's, it's not a business plan for 100 pages. It's, uh, it's, uh, the understanding that uh, the startup uh, already structured the idea and they know where to go, not only through 10, uh, pre 10 slides of the presentation, but also if they has, have a business model or lean canvas uh, for their project. Because it shows that they, they've done some homework, they understand uh, their business, their business model, and their customer and so on and so on. So they, they already found some answers to, to, the, to the most important question to make the business alive. So that's why uh, as a result of, uh, I wouldn't say as a result of our session because we have unfortunately only one, one hour for that, but as a result of this day, I would like to ask you to fulfill your canvas and uh, it will be great if you will be able to make it today and I will try during tomorrow give you a feedback on this. So uh, let's go to the uh, to the topic. So there are two, uh, can you hear the whole screen? Because I, I use it. We can see the screen, but the, the sound is a bit jagged. Uh -huh. That's bad. I don't know, I hear it very well. Yeah? I hear well also. Okay, hopefully Might it's not on my end. side. Okay. No, so sometimes, sometimes it's it's bad sound. It's like you interrupt sometimes. You know, it's a, it's like a hot water. The closest guys uh, has a better signal, <laughs> and when you're far from from the source, so um, yeah, I, 
guys, if, if it's uh, uh, it's common problem issue for all of you, I, I will try to switch if it's the, the issue on your side. So I, I can't input on that. So let's continue again. If, if it appears uh, often, let, let me know. I'll try to reconnect somehow. OK. So if you can see my screen, you can see a, a standard business model canvas. So it looks like that. Uh, it's, uh, so I prefer this one, but it's more for already established business, already existing business, let's say, or for analyzing uh, the industry. What uh, can be used for startups, it's Lean Canvas. It looks, it looks pretty similar, but, have, uh, but it has a, different, a bit different um, fields to, to fulfill. So um, I, will, I will run quickly through the standard one, and then we will focus on this one, because uh, I, I would offer you to fulfill it. So uh, business model canvas uh, as a, so has different different focuses. I mean, focus on, on the business itself, but different fields to fulfill. Here you can see numbers uh, how to fulfill it. It shows let's say my internal logic, uh, but uh, feel free to 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 use your own. So what is important to start from customer segment to formulate value proposition to this customer segment? If you have several customer segments. Of course, uh, you need to formulate different positions and you can face the moment when you have to create different business model canvas, different customer segments, it's okay. Uh, because at the end of the day... Maybe you, you can, uh, uh, I don't know, refresh or something because something is like, like, like not good uh, with your so sound. I mean, it's <clears> like... <throat> <laughs> Okay. The, I mean, it's not only if, uh, for me. It it can be with the mic something, you know, with the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like with microphone something. Yeah, yeah okay. it has some buzz, buzz, but it's okay. Yeah, let me reconnect uh, through my Maybe mobile if you phone. Just have a so I can use the microphone. Just. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, but but. A long term feels like not so so good. <laughs> Give me one second. Oh my god. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now better? Great. Super okay. cool. Okay, so let's let's try like that. Um, super. So let's restart. Yeah, can you hear the screen with the presentation? Can you hear Everything me? Everything is perfect. Yeah. Great. <coughs> so future of technologies. Um, <coughs> so business model canvas. Um, as I mentioned. As I mentioned, uh, we have to start from a customer segment. We have to formulate value proposition. Then we have to identify uh, customer relationship, channels, and so on and so on. So uh, I will share this presentation with you that you will use most probably these uh, questions to fulfill your uh, business model canvas. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but feel free to use your, your own uh, your own questions again. So the mm, the main idea is that it will be available for you. So customer segment, um, you have to identify the profile of your customer. So it's it doesn't work for you if you identify uh, that this is only uh, I don't know uh, male person uh, 20 50 years old uh, and and that's all or living in Moldova. It's not a customer profile. You have to divide it into a different age group. You have to uh, better identify if it's important for your business, if it's man or woman, uh, if uh, so it should be family or single. Uh, so what maybe even position he has uh, in, uh, in his uh, um, daily job. So you have maxim uh, maximum, uh, bring maximum details uh, to, to a customer profile. 
that will help you uh, in the future to uh, formulate your marketing uh, marketing um, strategy, marketing channels, marketing messages, and so on. So uh, that's why when I see, for for instance, uh, pretty common description of the customer audience, for me it means that uh, the startup doesn't know uh, their own audience. So here the more detailed. Uh, description you can put, please put it here. So, um, second thing, value preposition. So you have, if you do this exercise uh, like uh, uh, problem interview uh, or solution interview with, uh, with your uh, customers, so you already know uh, what are their pains, what, what is the value uh, which you can uh, cover uh, through your uh, solution. So uh, each segment has different values, of course. So for instance, I know women uh, 30 plus years old uh, has different values uh, from the men 20 plus years old. So you have to understand that. That's why uh, all people 20, 40, it's not your audience. Yes, so you have to understand that. And uh, so value proposition, what is important here? It's not your imagination, you know, about this uh, value proposition. It's it's knowledge. You can you have to know your client, your customer, and you have to know their value. That's why you have to put here information that you got from the client, not from your head or brainstorm of your uh, of your team. Then, after you formulate value proposition, you have to think about customer relationships. So uh, what type of, of relationship uh, you can offer to this customer segment or so they prefer means, uh, so it's contract based, it's, uh, I don't know, uh, freemium, it's, uh, it's um, I don't know. So any, any type of, uh, of relationships uh, describing how you, uh, how you um, operate with your customer uh, through the, uh, when you, provide them your service or, or sell sell the, to the customer your product. So um, this is the point. Next point, the fourth one is to describe uh, channels, how to communicate with, can you see my screen? Yes, or to make it bigger? No, it's okay. Mm -hmm, super. So um, channels, to describe all channels, how you can achieve your customer segment and actually how you can deliver the value proposition through a message uh, to your customer segment. So um, if you see, I, sorry, yeah, sure. Uh, so for example, I have several customer segments, yeah, and for each customer segment, I have, uh, I should have different channels. Should I uh, write all of this information in this boy business model canvas? like separately or just all, all information in one? Um, mm -hmm. So um, what's important for you uh, at the early stage startup is to, under to, to get traction as fast as possible. So that's why if you have different customer segments, means that some of them will be more uh, relevant for you and we'll get your idea faster and we'll pay you faster. The second one uh, might be uh, slower. So that means that it's you, for you, it's, it should be two different hypotheses, hypotheses. So that means that it makes sense to, or to make two different business model canvas in case the, the value proposition for them be really different. So if it can be, so it can be different customer segments with pretty similar value propositions uh, and pretty similar channels, it can happen. So that's why, okay, you just need to maybe identify that it's for ladies, you have need, you need to make some changes for men, you have to make some, some different message. Uh, that, that's why we start from customer segment and value proposition. Then, so we go there. Did I answer? Super. So uh, the fifth point is uh, revenue streams. So you see it. Um, it's important here to generate all things uh, that can bring you money uh, from, from your product. 
Um, so even even it can be um, advertising, it can be, but it's not like any. Again, I mentioned it in my previous webinar. So advertising right now, it's not a good business model. It, it, so it was good business model like 15 years ago. So, but so as additional uh, revenue stream, you can mention it. Uh, so subscriptions, uh, battery fuel, you can calculate uh, the revenue for one year, right? With a projection for this three year, you can put it here. Again, for you, it's important to see the flow and revenue streams. Then we can go to the uh, left part and here, uh, so we go to key activities, means that we have to understand what actually we have to do to uh, bring the value to our customer through the channels and actually to, to realize this value. So um, we, um, so we can describe here that we, if we need, for example, uh, some stock, so we have to put it here that we have to operate a stock, so that we have to operate a website, that we have to create this service, uh, what we have to do to create actually this service and so on. So our key, I would say business processes uh, for our business make sense to describe in, in this uh, point. So yeah, I think the best angle would be key business processes. Then we go to key resources. So actually here we put all things uh, <clears throat> that we need to realize uh, our business to actually realize these key activities to deliver this value preposition to the customer segment. So key resources for us again can be a website, uh, can be a team yeah, if we need key specialist in some things. So it's also important to mention here, uh, if we need, uh, again, to rent uh, the storage, so we put it here, if we have to organize a logistics, so we need cars, uh, so we need, I don't know, whatever we need resources to, uh, to operate our business. Of course, financial resources also make sense to put here. Um, not to forget about that, Key partners, I would, so it's the next eight thing. <clears throat> so I'm going through this quickly because we will focus more on Lean Canvas. So that's why not be um, puzzled. So the eight point key partners here, we describe uh, our stakeholders as it, as it calls, as it, as it called. So um, stakeholders, it's all, uh, parties which can be touched or influenced by your product, by your project. So means in case uh, you connect somewhere somehow regularly on a regular basis through your project with public authorities, it makes sense to mention it here. So your customers, your partners, um, you, your, I don't know, uh, logistic partner or whoever. Uh, so those we who can be influenced by your project and uh, the last thing the last field that we have to uh, fulfill is uh, cost structure so what we have to put here is actually all our costs to operate uh, business uh, and uh, it makes sense here uh, of course not to go deeply into details but to uh, to split uh, constant costs and variable costs. So variable costs means that when <clears throat> your production uh, is growing, so this cost usually is growing. When you I don't know when you have more customers, you need to have more service managers. So it will be for your uh, variable costs. So if you rent uh, an office uh, and uh, so your customer number is growing, you will not uh, rent uh, another office in a month. Yes, you will most probably rent it in, in three years, I know. So that will be for you uh, constant uh, costs. So uh, this is how business model looks like, mm, standard one. Do you have any questions about that? when we will be building it, I guess.
Cool. So uh, let's focus then on Lean Canvas. Um, so I will go uh, in a more slow way through these fields. And I offer you to fulfill it uh, using the sample that I sent to you. Uh, and so ask me some questions. Okay, so we have half an hour for that. So that's, that's why uh, I would like to spend it on that. What's important, and so this exercise is always used by accelerators or incubators. So it's to structure uh, the project through the Lean Canvas or Business Model Canvas. Uh, and <clears throat> it help uh, to identify on this stage, what are you missing? What, where, where there is a lack of maybe knowledge, resources or information or whatever. Okay, so if you don't have any questions on the previous part, let's focus on Lean Canvas. Uh, here we also start this customer segment. And uh, so list your target customers and users. Uh, so as it mentioned here and what is uh, and what is added here is that we have to identify our early adopters. So what does it mean basic on, on some studies, on some research, uh, like 5% or whatever uh, people are usually early adopters. They are fans of technologies and some innovations and so on. So, and there are such people in each topic, in each segment and, and, and wherever you, you would like to make a study. So you will identify that there is a normal, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, mathematical, you know, graph with a normal spreading, I don't know. So that's why for you, why it's important to identify early adapters because they will forgive you all your fuck ups and they will actually provide you uh, the valuable feedback. While the rest of your customers uh, will just leave you uh, with no feedback and so with, without money uh, if you will fail uh, with some things. So guys, I, uh, I would like to ask you to start fulfilling your canvas and uh, to put there in a short, uh, who is your customer segments and who might be your early adapters? So what can be a specific characteristic of such kind of people, how to identify them? Uh, yeah, for example, uh, I, had, um, I had a project uh, in, in Czech Republic, not mine project, I, I was some kind of consultant uh, there. So they, uh, they tried to make um, an application for uh, f application to help people to go to sleep uh, in time and to wake up for uh, like more energy, this more, more energy, let's say, and, and, and uh, easier and, and faster. So they uh, identified for themselves, for instance, that their early adopters can be those uh, who are dealing with I don't know, yoga. That means that these people are, uh, these people uh, think about uh, their health and mentality health and health of their body. So this was for, their, uh, for them early adopters. It's like a sample for you. Try to think who might be for you early adopters. Any questions, guys? None. Ion, Ion did, did you receive a sample? И он вы получили файл? Да, я получил, да. Получил, но у меня не открывается что-то. Но зато я вижу здесь. Да, я хотел бы, чтобы вы попробовали заполнить, ну, этот файл для вашего проекта. Я в чате здесь прикладывал его тоже. Попробуйте здесь открыть. Хорошо, спасибо. So should we start now and get it done today, like in this moment, so we can get it like a homework? I would like that you will do some kind of draft right, right now, spending three, five minutes on each things that we will go through it and uh, you will raise your questions because I believe that you will have some questions. So uh, and maybe, then, 
Evgeny, maybe we can we can do like uh, as a uh, I don't know super random. Take one of uh, those participants that are here and fill this uh, canvas on uh, like as, as an example. And other participants will understand better if they are doing correct. I don't know, just as a proposal. It's a good proposal, and everybody will be happy because I will work and they will not. So uh, that's why <laughs> I'm not. Um, I don't like this offer. Uh, but of course, if uh, guys uh, push me to this option, so we can do like that. Because again, guys, uh, even if I will show you uh, in the same way, I will comment your questions, and uh, so it's it will be valuable that you will do it right now. So we. we you know, when it's active work, uh, you will understand it better than like just listening. Yeah, I think it's better that we complete and after this uh, we work on our mistakes. Okay, so uh, yeah, please try to fulfill the first one. So you already have good presentations of your project. So I think that you already thought about customer segments and early adopters. What's important for me is that you start thinking about early adopters as a fact and who might be these early adopters for you. Uh, one minute to that, that guys. Okay, let's run to the second point. Second point is a problem. And with uh, not all of you, but with some of you, we already discussed the things that it's important to know your customer. It's important to know uh, their top problems, which, uh, which they have in their daily life and which problem we can solve through our project so uh, yeah if you did not do this exercise like uh, problem interview so we will train it tomorrow and we will focus on this topic tomorrow but again just uh, mark for yourself highlight for yourself that so this is missing uh, i understand that you can think that you already know all problems and values that uh, your customer have but the point is that it's your illusion unless your customer confirm that and you have usually two options first one you can go to the customer and ask them if uh, your illusion about their problem is true or false if this is true let's go and make an MEP and make some money out of that the second option is <coughs> is to create an MVP based on your illusions, go to the market, spend money on MVP, on your time and on marketing, and then get a response from the market uh, if they're going to pay for that or not. So if you, as you see, it's more costly way. That's why I uh, push you to make this problem solution fit as a first step before you go and spend a lot of money. What's important here is to understand that during problem interview, we need to identify existing alternatives uh, because we try to solve, it. so basically the modern approach to 
creating to create um, a, a, a startup is to solve the problem and bring the value to the customer. So uh, that's why when they have a great product with a great technology, it can not work just because we don't solve any problem and, and, and the customer don't pay us for, for solving its, his problem. So making a step back, we need to identify existing alternatives because actually our competitors, it's not only about uh, existing of same solutions on the market in other regions, but it, we are also going to compete with our solutions of a current problem of our customer. Means that, for example, if we are going to create a car sharing service for us, uh, a, cust a competitor will be also e-scooters and e-bikes because they uh, solve the problem of uh, mobility uh, of our customer. And uh, with an old fashioned approach, we are going to tell that, so we have competitors, other car sharing services and uh, company uh, distributor uh, and car distributors company. So that's why what's important for you is to think about existing alternatives, uh, how your target customer uh, segments solve their problem. So I hope that you spend this time while I was talking uh, about thinking of that. Please spend two minutes on fulfilling this problem field and ask me questions. If you understand that you don't have this information yet, again, highlight for yourself that you missed some information. How we should formulate the problem? Like um, literally the problem the customer is having without uh, saying what solution we're offering. So just like the customer, if if we uh, take the example of the car sharing, do we write uh, the customer needs to move from point A to B or something like this? Uh, I would say it's, uh, yes, first, yes, yes, to formulate like this, yes. Mm, and through the interview, I would even, I would add also my illusions that the customer has problem of uh, expensive owning of share and uh, cost of exploitation and so on and so on. So yes, without solution, just highlight problems. Again, it will help us then to, uh, when we create marketing strategy, to use these identified problems and to use actually words that used our customer, because it works like that. Okay, I have always a problem about, I don't know, cost of exploitation when I see an advertising about, so we know that you have this problem and I feel, oh yes, they know my problem. And then, so they offer me a solution, great. So I am very thankful to these guys uh, who know me, who know my pains and they invest their life to solve my problem my issue. So that, that, that how it, in a very basic ways, uh, it, it should work. Um, okay, guys. So I hope that you fulfilled second point. Just to be sure, please let me know who did not do because you don't have this information from your clients. Guys, can you hear me? Yes, we we do. Uh, may I ask a question, please? Yeah, sure, of course. I'm uh, yeah, like uh, we are talking uh, wine again, and so um, the problem is of the priced uh, wine. Uh, but uh, the existing <laughs> alternative uh, is uh, solving this problem or uh, the real alternative, like buying the overpriced wine anyway. So um, you, you mentioned that the price is a problem, yes? Yes. It is really a problem. I mean, uh, what try to uh, get 
the person when they try to buy a wine. When it comes to your project, as far as I remember our discussions, uh, you would like to uh, cover two points. First one is um, uh, access to the wine and storage. So that means that the problem is that there is no relevant storage for wines, for wine. Uh, second one, there is no access to, uh, easy access to wine collections from the region. And the third one is that um, instruments for financial uh, investment instruments are not um, accessible for, for, for clients. So these two points, not the price so of the wine. Yeah, if we talk about uh, wine investment, but even for uh, the um, wine consumers, it's a problem because, the, well, the wine, even at shops, it's very overpriced. So the D2C actually solves the price um, problem. Uh, so even if is... you want to simply buy a bottle of wine and drink it. Uh, again, we, we, we can spend a lot of time on discussing that. That's why the main uh, and the, the easiest thing is to go to the uh, client and to ask. And mm -hmm. before that, to identify. Because, you know, you, you, told, you tell me that the price of, of the wine is, uh, so is, is a blocker. From my point of view, again, I'm not a wine uh, fan, but I think that if I would understand uh, wine, uh, for me, it will not be so important uh, to, to, to pay 2,000 or 2,500 euros for the bottle. Because so I understand the value of the wine. If I don't understand the value of wine, I can find the wine for five euros. So that's why, you know, it's discussable. That's why it doesn't make sense between us. It makes sense to ask uh, your customers. Okay, thank you. So guys, uh, let's... Or uh, run quickly to the next thing. Um, so they mentioned here revenue streams uh, as a third point. Okay, we can make and follow this order. <clears throat> so very simple here, just to list uh, all revenue streams that you think you will generate from uh, for your project. So I uh, offer you <clears throat> to mention here sources and some revenue projections. So of course we will not have some time to make some projections here, but use one minute please to put here revenue streams that you think will be created uh, through your project. Извините, это каналы привлечения клиентов или они правильно понял? Нет, это каналы генерации прибыли. Ну, один пример можете, чтобы я понял? Что это... Ну, то есть вы будете зарабатывать, например, на продаже э, курсов. Соответственно, да. это э, ну, продажа курсов э, там, в таком-то объеме за год. Вот ваш канал, вот ваш э, revenue stream, как это сказать по-русски, источник ну, дохода. Надо, надо цифры это указывать, да? Опять же, вы для себя указываете, в идеале, конечно, если вы знаете цифры, то указывать цифры. Сейчас достаточно пока указать просто по пунктам. Мы зарабатываем с курсов, мы зарабатываем с, там, с онлайн э, продажи каких-то курсов, там, с индивидуального сопровождения, например. Э, то есть категории товаров и под товаров, да? То есть я правильно понимаю? Ну, в, в, в некотором роде, да. Это... Если просто там, опять же, да, как банальный реклам, как банальный пример, вы с рекламы зарабатываете, соответственно, это не товар, ну, своего ну, рода товар, но все равно для вас ревеню стрим. Да, линейка, можно... линейка. Хорошо, спасибо. Окей, okay, guys, so we are going to solution to the first point. Uh, yeah, so simply we formulate here how we're going to solve the problem of, uh, of the given customer segment. So using the information from the uh, second field. Uh, so better to understand how we fulfill each of our top problems of the customer. 
because uh, so usually we try to cover through our solution the process where customer faced several problems so that's why here in solution it will be great to describe how we're gonna uh, how we're gonna uh, solve each of the top problems uh, so we are running out of time so that's why i will go quickly but again i be, i hope that you spend the time while i'm describing the field uh, to fulfill it so about uh, unique value proposition as i mentioned before here we have um so we can use um you, we can use a formula formula uh of a unique value proposition i will try to share it uh, later on with you but the main thing the main idea here is to formulate already in a marketing and from the marketing angle how we gonna deliver a value through our solution to the customer segment to solve their problem so you see it's like a constructor uh which which uh help us to create a big picture so um yeah, I think you have to spend here some time to formulate it in the best way. Uh, but yeah, it's important thing. Again, uh, you will use it in your pitch decks. You will use it uh, in answering to your uh, potential investor. What is your unique selling point, unique value proposition? So how are you going to uh, compete with other competitors? uh so let's go to channels and the point six we already discussed shortly so here we put the list of all channels how we're going to communicate with our customer so means that okay uh, facebook google adwords uh, yandex uh, advertising whatever or maybe offline uh, offline advertising or I don't know, to, to print some articles, <clears throat> organize events, and so on. So all channels, how we can achieve our customer segment. What appear here as a new thing, uh, different from the standard business model canvas, is point seven and point nine. So point seven, it means key metrics. So it's usually uh again it's more modern lean canvas approach why it's important when we want to create um you know to change the world in three years it's a good idea it's a good story but uh it's a big story that's why we need to understand and we need to show actually to the team and to the investor to our partners that we know how to achieve it how we can show that we can show that through metrics means that okay in three years when we're going to change the, the the world means that we will have three million customers uh, i don't know offices in five uh, countries if it's important for our business uh and not an hour uh whatever metrics which uh, we set as a goal for ourselves if it's hard, it shouldn't be hard. You have to do this exercise for three years and for the first year as a, as a closest goal for your project, for your startup. So that's why here in key metrics, it's very important to show numbers and to, uh, to be sure that it looks trustable and that you can achieve it actually. Um, it can happen that startups have a vision, have a global picture, and they try to do something each month uh, to, to realize it. But without metrics, without understanding what should be your result uh, until the end of the year, you can't understand if each month you make a step forward to your goal or not. That's why this key metrics is extremely important field so eight so do you have any questions about key metrics <coughs> uh, 
I believe that you have, and I hope it will appear. Okay, so eighth point, cost structure, we already discussed. Here to list all your fixed and variable costs that you need to uh, to invest in uh, to realize your project. And uh, the cherry on, on your cake is unfair advantage, which uh, so the ninth field, which you did not, uh, you will not uh, find in the standard business model canvas. Why it's important? Because it show to the potential investor that their investments are protected. If you don't, if you create a simple marketplace for, um, for example agricultural companies uh, and another company will appear on the market with uh, the same marketplace uh, simply provide the services but with more investment money or with more uh, their own money that means that so how are you going to compete them how are you going to win this competition how are you going to save my investments as an investor so in this ninth field in this unfair advantages field you show how you're going to do this. It can be a specific agreement with banks. It can be specific uh, exclusive agreements with uh, producers, if we are talking about agricultural uh, businesses again. It can be um, exclusive uh, uh, agreement with logistic companies. It can be extremely cheap uh, logistic uh, for, for the whole business. It can be, I don't know, specific agreement with public authorities or whatever. So something that will protect my investments as investor to your project. So uh, do mm, you have any questions? Yeah, I have a question at point eight, cost structure. Sure. Um, actually, how we should uh, indicate it. I mean, uh, usually uh, this is, we, we have to look a little bit into the future, like up to three years and to estimate uh, expected costs, or we have to write the costs that are right now. For instance, uh, like we right now, we, we have some development costs within three years when we'll have, I don't know, a hundred, not, uh, more uh, um, more customers, right? A hundred times. Like this cost will increase, and uh, um, I'd like to to know how what kind of cost we we should write here. Mm, that's why we have a division here on the presentation on fixed and variable costs. Okay. So variable costs means then when uh, the turnover of a business will grow, variable costs also will grow. When you will uh, have more operations in three years, you will need to uh, hire more developers. So this will be variable costs. So you mentioned here current statement of costs, but divide it into fixed and variable costs. It will give me from the side vision uh, and understanding that, okay, so in case when we will grow, so this variable cost will grow as well. So how they will grow depends on many factors, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so you need to, to describe a current statement for at least uh, a, a year, for instance, or if you already are going to fundraise and you understand your costs for, for this next stage, so it makes sense to describe it here means that, okay, you understand that you will uh, hire another five developers if you will fundraise or when you will fundraise. So uh, please mark it somehow here. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Uh, about the key metrics. So uh, usually, is it something like uh, annual recurring revenue, the churn rate or this? Or should be something else uh, specific to the solution? Uh, it uh, can be and it should be a valuable key metrics for your project. So I'm not talking about financial uh, metrics here. I'm also talking about 
uh, I don't know, lifetime value of the customer and, and so on. So what influence dramatically on your project? What's important for your project to be alive and successful? Okay. So amount of uh, customers, amount of paying customers, um, I don't know, other markets. So how many markets? So financial metrics, it's one of these things, again, to show to you and to, to the team, to the investor, that uh, there is a tendency of growing. So guys, uh, if you will have any other questions, feel free to ask me. So uh, I would like to ask you to fulfill this Lean Canvas today, as you see it. Uh, again, it's so the idea is that you already started to start asking your, you, yourself these questions. And I will try to provide you feedbacks. And we will also uh, send this Lean Canvas to mentors that we, they will help you to focus on, on those fields where you missed maybe some information. In the meantime, this Lean Canvas as a structured, uh, how to say, structured picture of your, of your project can help them to advise you, to give you some maybe non-standard ideas uh how to organize your business in the most successful way so that that's why guys please today uh fulfill it i would say the deadline for this homework will be tomorrow morning 9 9 a.m if you don't mind uh and uh, yeah if you will have any questions please use telegram uh, group channel to ask these questions. Uh, I think it can be valuable for all of for all for everybody to to see answers. No. Okay. So guys, thank you so much, uh, Mary. Can you tell me if we have uh, our next speaker, Razvan Tim? He will be at 4.15. 4.15. I mean, where we will finish something like uh, this canvas uh, or some Q&A session, or we'll have break till uh, 4.15. Uh, we uh, promised to Ion that he will pitch yeah. his uh, project. So let's spend uh, this time on that. И он, сейчас как раз время, как мы с вами договорились, что вы расскажете про свой проект. Наверное, на румынском, ребята, я попрошу вас помочь Иону и дать свои комментарии, вопросы. Хорошо. Ион, а на русском вам неудобно? Ну, мне никому неудобно. На русском, но на румынском неудобно. На, на а почему на румынском? Ну, хотя бы, чтобы Евгений понял, не знаю. Потому что не, все ну, тут понимают... Не, 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 Мэри, как, как удобно, мне просто, скорее всего, надо будет на 15 минут включиться, поэтому на меня... А, окей. А, тогда, еще. ну, хорошо, тогда на румынском, окей. Покажите на русском. Вы окей, румыны. Коллеги, окей, румыны. Тату лумен целеджи. Да. Да, тату лумен целеджи. Раду тату Eu vreau să înțeleg câte minute am și care-i scopul, adică trebuie să, să, ce? Ca să ce? Deci este vorba despre 3 minute de prezentare a, a dumneavoastră. Deci o minută prezentați în general cine sunteți, de, ce background aveți. Adică ca, deci, scopul este că în fiecare startup în spațiile lui oricum stau oamenii. Adică chiar dacă ați faceți șah, media, mâine să faceți altceva sau nu știu ce, adică pe general să înțelegem fiecare ce background are, cu ce, ce experiență în viață, ce, sau ce pasiuni. Respectiv, de atâta vrem să cunoaștem cum, ce, ce, ce fel de startup reprezentați. Foarte pe scurt, da? Așa, eu trebuie cumva să partajez ecranul, probabil, da? Da. Dar, uh, mm, let's uh, switch back because we have Razvan uh, right here. 
Hi. Hello, you Andrew. have also uh, like a nice background. Like uh, simulating office, an office, right? These days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, till today I had the, 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 the similar, but uh, because we have boot camp, I tried this kind of thing. Uh, so uh, welcome. Uh, our moderator, Evgeny, go to another coffee. Uh,